What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Aviators channel. Glad you're with us. Today's going to be kind of an interesting day. So, last week there was an incident with the RV7A that we fly, and um, the pilot and his wife, uh, and they're totally okay, um, who were flying it, uh, came in, gusty wind conditions, and uh, on their rollout, he said he had a little bit of a hard landing, but on their rollout, the uh, front nose gear uh, collapsed. You know, there was a prop strike, and <clears throat> in a kind of sick and sadistic way, I I enjoy doing touch and goes when the wind conditions aren't ideal. I think it's good practice, and you know, I encourage other pilots to do that. And so, it's hard to say that you know wind will cause your landings to be bad. In fact, for me, the opposite is, is true. On really windy days, yeah, I land better. So, I don't know. Before I made a video about it, I wanted to listen to what the A&P has to say about it, wanted to do some research, and so I've done that. And, um, you know, it turns out um, there are a lot of incidents of RV6 and 7A nose gears collapsing. In fact, they make a, an anti-splat kit for it that reinforces uh, the nose gear. In fact, it reinforces the area on the nose gear where this one collapsed. You know, so talk to some of those pilots who had that incident, listen to their stories, and it's been pretty consistent with what, uh, with what we think happened here. Um, so anyways, I was going to uh, show you what happens when you retract the nose gear on an RV-7A. Um, I'll show you the damage and let you judge for yourself. Here we are. The RV-7A with a collapsed nose gear. You can see that that, uh, that nose gear folded almost straight forward and failed right there basically and then was bent up underneath you can see there's uh, no way that nose gear is ever going to fly again. Then as you come up, the prop is bent right there at the end where it struck the ground. And then again over here. Now my understanding is that the engine was at idle when this happened. And so that would explain why as you look down underneath the airplane there just isn't much damage it's uh you know there's a crack or two but if there were any kind of forward inertia those rivets would be split or sheared not split um and so we had the a p kind of come over and look at all the damage and kind of put together a plan on how to repair it and uh, you know the firewall is perfectly straight there's really not any damage to the engine cowl whatsoever there's a little crack that i found um, but otherwise not a lot of damage not a lot of airframe damage i'll say there's obviously a lot of engine damage and uh, even if i straighten that with a hammer and a file it's still never going to fly again um, You know, as we go around the airframe, there's just no stress uh, buckles anywhere on the airframe. And so that kind of lends some credence to what the pilot said, which is, you know, it just kind of collapsed on it. You think of these things and you think of them as being eventful, and, and his perspective was that it was relatively uneventful. And uh, as we look at the airframe here, it's consistent with what he said. So, you know, we're happy nobody was hurt here, but, uh, you know, there's no buckles whatsoever in the, uh, in the airframe. So, you know, it looks like all the stress and energy was kind of absorbed by the uh, front gear and the prop. See the wings are untouched, unscathed.
And as you can tell, the gear is just folded straight forward. And so I talked a little bit ago about the uh, anti-splat kit, and it's actually a reinforced piece of metal that goes the length of this landing gear as it comes out of the cowling there and uh, gives it more shear stability. And, um, you know, like I said, I had thought about putting that on here, but you know, I never really thought I'd need it. Uh, you can see there where it kind of got some dirt in the uh, air intake there, but, um, you know, just not as much damage as you would expect from a nose gear collapse. Now, don't get me wrong, it's going to be expensive to put a new engine on this and a new prop, but, you know, that's what we got to do. So there you go. That's a uh, retractable nose gear RV7A. So she'll fly again. Um, not with that prop and not with that nose gear. But she'll fly again. Everybody was okay. Not a scratch, bruise, or anything on anybody. Thankful about that. And, uh, you know, this week the, uh, the engine's going to get uh, taken off and sent off to be rebuilt. Uh, we'll get a new prop for it. We're going to have the uh, A&P take apart the uh, inside of the, uh, the cockpit where the spar goes through and where the main gear connect and just make sure there's no stress issues there. Um, you know, and do it right. That's how we roll. I'm not sure what to think about, uh, about the nose gear on this. You know, after talking to 20 plus people, talking to vans, talking to, you know, reading about other incidents like this, um, they're all pretty consistent. I, I said that before, I'll say it again. It's, you know, they're just kind of rolling along and the gear folds up. Um, and it's even happened on a couple of the uh, aircraft that have the anti-splat kit. So the crazy thing is, if the landing gear on these things just spontaneously collapsed, there's so many of these RV6 and 7As out there that you'd hear a lot more about it. And so that leads me to believe that, you know, maybe this gear was installed wrong or, or something, you know, I don't know. I don't care. I do know I like this airplane and it's a hoot to fly. I don't have any, uh, you know, I don't think about this and think, oh, it's not safe or anything like that. Um, because these are safe. These are very safe airplanes. And this is just one of those things. You know, you look at it, shrug your shoulders, and move on. So as I think about it, this could be an opportunity. I think I'll do some videos on, uh, you know, getting the new engine put on and... Um, you know, it'll be fun for you guys to follow along and see how an airplane's repaired. Um, anyways, if you like this sort of thing, like, subscribe, comment, and uh, stay tuned for the next video.